Hey guys, my name is Tom, and in this devlog I'm going to begin adding an inventory system to my multiplayer pirate game. I'm going to try out a bit of a different format in this video, where instead of talking about what I've done on a daily basis, I'll let things accumulate at least a little bit until I've made some progress that's actually worth talking about. I think I've slowly been moving towards this kind of style, especially in recent weeks, so the difference might not really be that noticeable, but let me know what you think of the new format once you've watched the video. So obviously I want to add an inventory in this video, but before I do that I want to polish off some things that I left somewhat unfinished in the last devlog. Particularly the fact that the axe and pickaxe tools are still represented by a cube and a sphere, which can be confusing and doesn't look nice at all. While I was setting the axis colors in Unity, I realized that my vertex coloring code wasn't just using the color that I was setting in the inspector. For some reason, I decided to grab the linear version of the color that I actually wanted, despite it already being in linear color space. This meant that all my colors were actually inaccurate. For the longest time, I felt like the lighting and coloration looked slightly off, but I was never able to figure out what it was. Of course it ended up being a silly mistake on my part. Once I fixed up that code, all the colors were actually being displayed the way they should have been the entire time. Since I had fine-tuned object colors to look nice even with the extra conversion to linear space, everything looked extremely bland and washed out after fixing it, so I went through all the colors and made them look decent again. There's probably still some fine-tuning to do since I revamped the colors pretty quickly, but I think this looks so much better than before. Somehow it just looks more correct like this, so I'm really glad I caught that mistake. After that, I also modeled a pickaxe, and since I was already in the business of tying up some loose ends, I decided to revisit the stars on my skybox. Here's what they looked like before, which in my opinion is pretty ugly. They were way too dense, too big, and worst of all, they were being scrunched together towards the northern and southern sections of the sky. Fixing the scrunching ended up being fairly straightforward. Instead of using 2D Voronoi noise, I used a 3D version of the function, and that was kind of it. I've had the code for 3D noise for a long time, so I don't actually remember where it came from and who to credit for it, but it's been very helpful. From there, I just decreased the star size and spread them out a bit more, which left me with this. I think the way the stars look now is an immense improvement. The one thing I'm concerned about is my ability to rotate the stars. It might be easy, but it could also get complicated due to the way the skybox currently works, but I guess I'll have to wait and see. Then again, I'm not even sure that it's actually necessary to rotate the stars. Once I add clouds, a lot less of the night sky will be visible, and players probably won't do all too much stargazing anyways, so it may not be worth the effort. Over the next few days, I'll be working on getting the inventory system in place, so I'll update you guys when I've made some meaningful progress. Alright, so it's a couple days later, and I've made resource nodes like the trees and rocks drop objects when harvested. These objects can be picked up and carried around, however they're not like your typical survival game items as you can only carry one at a time. They represent the raw resources you can collect, and eventually you'll be able to sell them to NPCs and possibly to other players in exchange for in-game currency. Alternatively, you'll be able to use them to modify or repair your ship, to craft certain items, and to build on islands. These carryable objects are basically the first half of the inventory system, with the second half being what could be considered a more traditional inventory, where a UI menu displays what you've currently got on you. However, this duality of the inventory posed a bit of a, for lack of a better word, problem. For something like wood logs which you receive when cutting down trees, it would make a lot of sense to be able to use the axe you already have to immediately turn them into wooden planks or beams. Following that logical train of thought, you should be able to use these wooden planks to repair your ship. However, since planks would be a traditional item that you could carry several of at a time, and also store them in crates or barrels on your ship, there would be nothing stopping players from simply turning all their logs into planks. I'm not entirely sure what I'll do with items stored in crates if you sink, but unless I make those barrels float to the surface afterwards, there'd be no reward in terms of resources for the victorious crew. I did have the idea to simply add two types of wooden planks to the game. The one type would be crude and unreliable, which you'd receive when you turn a log into planks yourself, whereas the other type would be produced through trade with an NPC, or a more sophisticated crafting mechanism which can't be used just anywhere. 
The crude planks could be used to repair your ship as needed, but you'd need the more advanced or professionally made planks to modify or fully repair the ship. This would force or at least encourage players to keep wood in its raw form as a physical object, which would flow to the surface upon sinking. Then again, two types of planks could be somewhat confusing, and if players start hoarding a lot of resources in their raw form instead of storing them in item form, it could start lagging out my servers. However, the other options are basically to let supply barrels float up when sunk, or to just not reward attacking players with supplies unless they steal them before sinking the boat. I actually find the concept of having to steal everything you want off a boat before sinking it quite appealing, probably because it would discourage players from instantly going for the sink, which would in turn make combat last a little longer. At the same time, it could quickly lead to players spawn camping others, which can be frustrating, and if I give players the option to scuttle their own ship the way Sea of Thieves does, it would almost certainly cause the if I can't have it, no one can have it mindset to thrive. So it's really between letting supplies and barrels flow to the surface after sinking, or having multiple types of planks to encourage players to hoard raw resources. I'm really not entirely sure on which way I'm going to go, but if you've got any thoughts on which option would make more sense or be more fun, please do let me know in the comments. Maybe you even see a completely different possibility which I haven't thought of, in which case I'd also love to hear it. Anyways, the next step is to implement the second half of the inventory system, which will look more like a traditional survival inventory with various slots that can contain stacks of items. Before I do that though, I recently watched a video about the theory behind object-oriented programming. Being entirely self-taught, I had some sort of vague idea about what object-oriented programming is, but I had never spent any time digging into it and really familiarizing myself with the concepts. While I do try to keep my code clean and reusable, after watching this video I felt almost enlightened in a way. I'll leave a link to the video in the description, and I really recommend giving it a watch, especially if you're self-taught like me. Often I just go with whatever is quickest when I'm writing code, and that frequently results in different objects having their logic coupled together, which is generally considered a big no-no. Encapsulation is definitely something I don't naturally think of while programming. In the moment, I was often not aware of it, but looking back at some of the spaghetti code I've written, particularly with a project of this size, I can really see that things are getting messy. Some of the shortcuts I've taken to make things work are absolutely horrendous and honestly, kind of making me question my past self's cognitive abilities, so I think it's about time to properly clean things up to future-proof the project's code. That might take a couple days since I need to do this for both the client and server code, and since I won't be adding any new mechanics during that time, there won't be much to talk about, so I think I'll end this devlog here. If you enjoyed the video and you'd like to help me out, remember to smash the like button, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and all that other important YouTube stuff. Also, let me know what you think I should do about the two types of planks situation I discussed earlier. I do read all the comments, and I'd really appreciate your perspective. In the next devlog, I'll be implementing the rest of the inventory system, so stay tuned for that. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.